In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. A very warm welcome to St. Mary's the University Church, particularly if you're joining us for the first time this morning. And we extend a welcome also to those joining us online from home. As we remember God's presence with us now, we say together, Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hidden, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. As we prepare to celebrate the presence of Christ in word and sacrament, let us call to mind and confess our sins. Almighty God, our, our Heavenly, Heavenly Father, Father, we, we have, have sinned, sinned against you and against our neighbour in thought and word and deed, through negligence, through weakness, through our own deliberate fault. We are truly sorry and repent of all our sins. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, died for us from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness and keep you in life eternal through Jesus Christ our Lord.
We remain standing as we pray in silence together. O Lord, we beseech you mercifully to hear the prayers of your people who call upon you, and grant that they may both perceive and know what things they ought to do, and also may have grace and power faithfully to fulfill them. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God now and forever. Amen. A reading from St. Paul's second letter to Timothy. Paul, an apostle of Christ Jesus by the will of God, for the sake of the promise of life that is in Christ Jesus, to Timothy, my beloved child, grace, mercy, and peace from God the Father and Christ Jesus our Lord. I am grateful to God, whom I worship with a clear conscience, as my ancestors did, when I remember you constantly in my prayers night and day. Recalling your tears, I long to see you so that I may be filled with joy. I am reminded of your sincere faith, a faith that lived first in your grandmother Lois and your mother Eunice, and now, I am sure, lives in you. For this reason, I remind you to rekindle the gift of God that is within you through the laying on of my hands. For God did not give us a spirit of cowardice, but rather a spirit of power and of love and of self-discipline. Do not be ashamed then of the testimony about our Lord or of me, his prisoner, but join with me in suffering for the gospel, relying on the power of God who saved us and called us with a holy calling, not according to our works, but according to his own purpose and grace. This grace was given to us in Christ Jesus before the ages began, but now it has been revealed to us through the appearing of our Saviour Christ Jesus, who abolished death and brought life and immortality to light through the gospel. For this gospel I was appointed a herald and an apostle and a teacher, and for this reason I suffer as I do. But I am not ashamed, for I know the one in whom I have put my trust and I am sure that he is able to guard until that day what I have entrusted to him. Hold to the standard of sound teaching that you have heard from me in the faith and love that are in Christ Jesus. Guard the good treasure entrusted to you with the help of the Holy Spirit living in us. For the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
Alleluia, alleluia. Speak, Lord, for your servant is listening. You have the words of eternal life. Alleluia. Alleluia. Hear the Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Luke. Glory Glory to you, you, O Lord. The apostles said to the Lord, increase our faith. The Lord replied, if you had faith the size of a mustard seed, you could say to this mulberry tree, be uprooted and planted in the sea, and it would obey you. Who among you would say to your slave who has just come in from ploughing or tending sheep in the fields, come here at once and take your place at the table? Would you not rather say to him, prepare supper for me, put on your apron, and serve me whilst I eat and drink? Later you may eat and drink. Do you thank the slave for doing what was commanded? So you also, when you have done all that you were ordered to do, say, we are worthless slaves. We have done only what we ought to have done. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise Praise to you, O Christ. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. What is faith, and how does faith work? Like the biblical character Abraham, who set out in faith for the promised land, we also have our own promised lands that we want to get to. A longing fulfilled, a broken relationship restored, or an impossible problem solved. But how do we get there? What does it mean to have faith? On Wednesday, I visited Pace Gallery in Mayfair to see the new exhibition of Brazilian artist Marina Perez Semeo. Semeo's work is an investigation of the metaphysical and it hovers in that liminal space between abstraction and figuration. Her paintings are a riot of color, big swathes of jewel-toned oranges, yellows, and greens. Their undulating gestures create an impression of fabric almost like the texture of fine velvet. You feel like you are being immersed into the artist's dreamlike world. The works evoke the wild and dramatic landscapes of Simeo's childhood just outside Rio de Janeiro. And for the first half of my visit, I was alone in the gallery, and then a very happy, vibrant couple came in, and they were marveling at the paintings in a refreshingly loud and ungallery kind of way. The woman in the couple exclaimed to one of the gallery curators, wow, these pack a punch you feel like you're falling into them. And she was right. One of the most remarkable aspects of the artworks are the continuous horizon lines that go across a series of seven meter wide panels. You have the feeling of gazing through archways and apertures into a new open country. Curator Diana Campbell says, Marina's work attempts to open up portals of wonder in the viewer making them imagine other universes where the limits of reality do not hold. What a magnificent phrase, and actually a really powerful description of faith. Other universes where the limits of reality do not hold. I think this is why great visual art or literature or movie making has such appeal because we get to escape the bleakness and the challenges of some of our present realities just for a moment when we are taken across a new landscape into a new world where anything can happen and where the story has the freedom to go anywhere at once. 
The brilliant philosopher and theologian Herbert McCabe expands this line of thinking. This is what he says about faith. Faith is about what is beyond the horizon of the humanly possible. Faith is exploring into what people could never achieve by themselves. Faith is the mysterious need in us to get to where we could surely never go. Faith, in fact, is about what we call God. Faith is the inkling that we are meant to be divine, that our journey will go beyond any horizon at all into the limitlessness of the Godhead. Faith is not our power to set out on this journey into the future. It is the future laying hold on us. It is the crucified and risen Christ gathering us toward himself. Faith is not something we possess. It is something by which we are possessed. It is the spirit of Christ bringing us to what we are meant for, the eternal love, which is the Father. This is a very different way of thinking about faith because it presents faith not as an activity, something we do, or a substance, something we try to muster up from somewhere. It presents faith as the initiating presence of Christ himself. This is the lesson Jesus tries to teach his disciples in our gospel reading today. The disciples say to him, increase our faith. Jesus has just been asking them to practice exceptional forgiveness, to forgive again and again and again. But they know that to get a human being to forgive is a bigger task than swimming across an ocean. To forgive on the level that Jesus asks will be impossible, they feel, without a great deal more faith. But Jesus shockingly refuses their request. He will not give them more faith. Instead, he says to them, if you had faith the size of a mustard seed, you could say to this mulberry tree, be uprooted and plant obey you. Jesus agrees they need faith, but he doesn't support their assumption that a larger quantity will help them. They don't need more faith. Instead, they need to be reminded about what faith is and assured that they already have everything they need. They don't need anything more than just Jesus himself. He is the universe where the limits of reality do not hold. I used to think of this image of the replanting of the mulberry tree like a magic trick that Jesus was teaching. I've never really understood it. It was like the realm of the miraculous, only available to superpowered, prayerful religious people who were better at faith than the rest of us. But what Jesus is implying here is, this is what I do all the time, since the beginning of time. The extensive roots of the mulberry tree are embedded in the earth and it grows in the soil. But where Jesus lives, the mulberry tree can be uprooted from where it has always been planted and replanted in a place where it has never been, a place where no one would ever suspect it could grow. The impossible has suddenly become possible because as we read in the first chapter of Luke, nothing will be impossible for God. But actually, this is just half the story about faith because we're still left with the question, well, where do we come into this? What role do we play in turning our impossible problems into solutions? How do the disciples actually manage to forgive someone? There is a scene in the Gospel of Mark that parallels the psychological dynamics of this exchange between Jesus and his disciples. When the crowds around Jesus become hungry, the disciples say to him, the hour is now very late, send them away so that they may go into the surrounding country and villages and buy something for themselves to eat. Jesus replies, you give them something to eat. The disciples' immediate response is to focus on their lack. If they are to feed people, they need more than they have. They perceive the situation as impossible unless they bring in something from the outside. Jesus instead directs them inside to their interior world and asks them to reappraise what they might bring to the situation. 
he sees more in his followers than they see in themselves. He's continually urging them to reconceive who they are and what they can do. And this is the very core of faith. It is the realization that as followers of Christ, we also live in that universe where there are no limits to what is possible because Christ is not separate from us. We often think of Jesus like a magician or security guard that we call on when we're in trouble, the interventionist God that we dial up in a time of crisis because he's over there or up there doing something else. Throughout his ministry, Jesus was at pains to communicate his proximity. He says, the kingdom of God is within you. I am in them and you are in me. St. Paul concurs, in him we live and move and have our being. Perhaps the most radical statement of all is where Jesus uses very graphic and quiet imagery to really drive home this point. In John chapter 6, he says, unless you eat the flesh of the Son of Man and drink his blood, you have no life in you. When we take communion, it is a reminder of the closeness of Jesus. It's precisely what Herbert McCabe is saying in his statement about faith. Faith is not something we possess. It is something by which we are possessed. It is where Christ's words and our words, Christ's character and our character, Christ's vision of the world and our vision of the world all become indistinguishable. When we allow ourselves to be consumed by Christ or when we consume him, however we look at it, then we realize that we are not separate or separated from him. His universe is our universe. He gives us the power within us to speak to the dry bones and tell them to live, to be merciful and forgiving when our human instinct is the exact opposite, to invoke the name of Christ over every problem and call out the possible from the impossible. To have faith the size of a mustard seed is not about doing anything other than just stopping for a very brief little moment and remembering who we are and what or who we have within. I love what the woman at Pace Gallery said about the Simeo paintings. You feel like you're falling into them. This is perhaps the best posture of faith, to let go, to look beyond the horizon line, beyond our separateness, and just fall right in, into that universe called Jesus, where the limits of reality do not hold. Amen. Let us stand to profess the faith in which we seek to grow. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, of one being with the Father, through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, was incarnate from the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. In the power of the Spirit and in union with Christ, let us pray to the Father. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, you promised through your Son, Jesus Christ, to hear us when we pray in faith. Give grace to us, our families and friends, and to all our neighbours, so that we may serve Christ in one another and love as he loves us. 
Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Gracious God, in October we take delight in the rich colours of autumn that startle the senses with their bold extravagance. May we never cease to marvel at nature's palette. In October, we enjoy the last fruits of the Earth's generosity this year. May we in turn be generous in our care for this good Earth and make it our concern that every species of bird, animal, tree and plant survives and flourishes in its own way. We pray for all the organizations and individuals committed to conservation and care of the environment. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Saviour of the world, be present in all places of suffering, violence and pain. Help those who are experiencing war, floods, earthquakes and famine and other hardships and bring hope even in the darkest night. We continue to pray for Ukraine, Russia, Pakistan, and all places where your help is desperately needed. Lord, in your mercy. Dear Lord, we ask you to bless the church throughout the world. Bless this university church of St. Mary the Virgin and all who worship here. Give guidance to those who lead us here, to Will, Hannah, Charlotte, Alan, Sarah, and all other associated clergy. We give thanks for all who work here, including the volunteers. Help us to make this place of worship one of welcome to all. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. Almighty God, we pray for our King, Charles III, William, Prince of Wales, and all the royal family. Give to His Majesty enduring wisdom and faith in the service of this land, and of ask you, Lord, to be their rock and their guide. Help them in their studies and give them enjoyment in the social aspects of college life. Lord, in your mercy, Great physician, stretch out your hand to bring comfort, wholeness and peace to all who suffer in body, mind or spirit. We pray for all who are in need, for the sick, the sorrowful and bereaved. Here at St Mary's we remember Tris, Jenny, Betty, Alexandra, Nick, Yaroslava, Doe, Ian, Emma, Moose, Josie, Jill, and Tanya. We also pray for all those who bring comfort, care, and healing. Lord, please fill us with compassion that we may be channels of your healing love. We give thanks for human love and friendship and all that enriches our daily lives. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Father of all, hear us as we remember those who have died in the faith of Christ. Let light perpetual shine upon them and give them peace. Today we remember Callistos Ware. May we also remember those dear to us, both friends and family, who we no longer see but hold dearly in our hearts. According to your promises, grant us with them a share in your eternal kingdom. Lord, in your mercy. In communion with the Blessed Virgin Mary and all the saints, we commend ourselves and all for whom we pray to the mercy of God's unfailing grace, saying, Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. God is love, and those who live in love live in God, and God lives in them. The peace of the Lord 
be always with you. And also with you. Let us offer one another a sign of Christ's peace. As the grain once scattered in the fields and the grapes once dispersed on the hillside are now reunited on this table in bread and wine. So Lord, may your whole church soon be gathered together from the corners of the earth into your kingdom. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. Father, we give you thanks and praise through your beloved Son, Jesus Christ, your living word through whom you have created all things, who was sent by you in your great goodness to be our Saviour. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he took flesh. As your Son, born of the Blessed Virgin, he lived on earth and went about among us. He opened wide his arms for us on the cross. He put an end to death by dying for us and revealed the resurrection by rising to new life. So he fulfilled your will and won for you a holy people. Therefore, with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, we proclaim your great and glorious name, forever praising you and singing.
Lord, you are holy indeed, the source of all holiness. Grant that by the power of your Holy Spirit and according to your holy will, these gifts of bread and wine may be to us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ, who in the same night that he was betrayed, took bread and gave you thanks. He broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat. This is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, after supper, he took the cup and gave you thanks. He gave it to them, saying, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it, in remembrance of me. Great is the mystery of faith. Christ, Christ has, has died. died. Christ, Christ is risen. risen. Christ, Christ will, will come, come again. again. And so far, the calling to mind his death on the cross, his perfect sacrifice made once for the sins of the whole world, rejoicing in his mighty resurrection and glorious ascension, and looking for his coming in glory, we celebrate this memorial of our redemption as we offer you this, our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving. We bring before you this bread and this cup, and we thank you for counting us worthy to stand in your presence and serve you. Send the Holy Spirit on your people, and gather into one in your kingdom all who share this one bread and one cup, so that we in the company of the Blessed Virgin Mary and all the saints may praise and glorify you forever. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, by whom and with whom and in whom, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory be yours, Almighty Father, forever and ever. Amen. Let us pray with confidence as our Saviour has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. We break this bread to share in the body of Christ. Though we are many, we are one body, because we all share in one bread. God's holy gifts for God's holy people. Jesus Christ is holy. Jesus Christ is Lord, to the glory of God the Father.
Let us pray. Almighty God, you have taught us through your Son that love is the fulfilling of the law. Grant that we may love you with our whole heart and our neighbours as ourselves. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Almighty God, we thank you for feeding us with the body and blood of your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him we offer you our souls and bodies to be a living sacrifice. Send us out in the power of your Spirit to live and work to your praise and glory. Amen. Will you please be seated for the notices? It's very good to welcome you to St. Mary's this morning, particularly if you're joining us for the first time. Directly after the service, there will be refreshments in the De Broom Chapel over there. There'll be tea, coffee, juice, and sherry. Um, and you'd be very welcome to join us. Today, we also celebrate a very special birthday for John Lewis, um, and a, a member of our congregation, and so we will um, also be sharing some cake today as well. I know we did this last week, and we're not going to do this every Sunday, but while we have got important birthdays, we will do this. So I hope you can join us for that. Um, speaking of refreshments, on Wednesdays at 11.15, there will be coffee and donuts uh, in the De Broom Chapel. Um, so if you are in town and you would like to join us uh, for those refreshments, you will be very welcome indeed. And next Sunday, following the uh, 10.30 East Sung Eucharist, there will be a parish lunch in the Old Library. Um, this is a kind of bring and share lunch. Everybody's welcome to come. Um, if you plan to bring um, some food next week, if you could have a word with Janet Greenland or Margaret Chaundy, um, they would be very pleased to hear from you. Um, it, it usually is a bit of a bun fight. Um, it's great fun. Um, and so we do hope uh, that you will be able to join us on that occasion. Um, and finally, I just want to draw to your attention 
um, that was published a couple of weeks ago. This provides lots of information about all the things that are happening at St. Mary's over the next few months. So if you haven't got a copy of it yet, please do collect a copy before you leave today. Will you please stand? The peace of God which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and the love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. Amen. Amen. Go, in, <laughs> go in peace to love and serve the Lord. In the, in the name, name of Christ. Christ. Amen. Amen.